So one of the verses in the Quran that relates to this is in Surah al rum And like I said, Rome is a very interesting, it's a very interesting uh, word in the Quran because it's sometimes translated as Greeks and sometimes as the Byzantines, but it actually means the Europeans. Because if you study um, what we would call a kind of sacred history of Europe, Rome really is at the heart of the creation of Europe, the actual city, which is in Italy. It's not in, uh, it's not in Istanbul. Istanbul is New Rome. It's not in Istanbul. And so, so the Romans are, in their legend, come from Turkey. They came from the fall of Ilium in, in the uh, uh, Troy, what they call Troy, the city of Troy, where Aeneas flees and he initially goes to Tunisia. And then uh, he, he, uh, Dido is there, and then he, she ends up committing suicide. He leaves because he has to go found Rome. And so he has his destiny. So he founds Rome, and then even the Venerable Bede, who was writing in the, I think in the 7th century, uh, the history of England, talks about you know, that their origins are they're, they're Romans. And so even though this is a kind of sacred history and modern historians might not accept any of those. That's how the Quran is looking at it. And that's why many scholars said the hadith that mention a Rome are hadith that mean the Europeans. Like the Prophet said, I'm not afraid for you from the Persians. The people that really trouble me are the Romans, in other words, the Europeans, because they will come one after another uh, and they won't stop. And he actually said that they don't end until the last hour. So uh, this, this was uh, his concern, was the, the impact that the Romans would have on us. And in the hadith, تَقُمَ السَّعَ وَالرَّوْمَ أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ The end of time won't come until the Romans, the Europeans, are the majority of people. Uh, Ahmed Muhammad said that that's based on مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فُوَ مِنْهُمْ Like whoever resembles a people is one of them. So if you look at how the whole world has become European, all the traditional dress, all these marvelous ways of dressing. I mean, I was in Japan, and we were in a, a, a garden walking. I was with Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, Allah And we were in this garden, and these people were dressed in traditional Japanese. It was for wedding. But it was so stunning to see their traditional dress. It was just so beautiful. But all the other Japanese were dressed like Europeans. And this is because of the Qa'ida Umraniya. It's a, a principle of civilization that Ibn Khaldun actually writes about in his book, The Muqaddimah, where he says that the maghlub will always yuqallid al-ghalib, that the one who's conquered will always imitate the people that conquered them, that this is something that happens. So now all these beautiful Muslim clothes that you had all over the world, I mean, the wonderful embroidery work, every Palestinian village had its own unique dress, you know, you could tell a Libyan from a Moroccan or an Algerian just based on their clothes. So when you went on Hajj, all these different peoples had these different clothes. All of this is disappearing from the world. Even the food is becoming homogenized. So the hamburger now is the most popular food in the world, which is hamburger. It's from Germany, right? So it's very interesting in Surah to Rome because it begins saying that they know the outward of this world. They know the outward of this world. I mean, they're masters of the outward of this world, the, the European civilization. It's, it's, and much of it, I think, was birthed by the Muslim civilization. In fact, I really believe my interpretation of the hadith of one of the signs of the end of time in that famous hadith of Jibril, which is Imam Nawawi puts it as one of the foundational hadiths in, in Islam. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the hour, he says... He, he doesn't know the actual time, but he does know the signs. And one of the signs that he gave is, that the servant will give birth to her master. And I really believe that one of the meanings of that is this, this, the civilization of Islam, which was a servant civilization, gave birth to Europe, which is a master civilization. Um, because the thing about Muslims is wherever they went, they really... And, they, and they're human beings. They had greed and they had ambition and they had all of the things that go with, with uh, human beings. So I'm not looking at this in some, some kind of 
fantasy or fairy tale. But if you look at Muslim civilizations, the things that they did were always with these ideals that they had, these amazing ideals. So they produced hospitals that serve the people. They, they, big Pharma could have not emerged in the Muslim civilization where medicine was solely for money. Muslims would have been much closer to somebody like Jonas Salk. He discovered the polio vaccine, and he, he wouldn't patent it. And they asked him why he wouldn't patent it. He said, do you patent the rays of the sun? You know, that this is for people. This is to help people. And that, I think, m most Muslims, that would have been the type of impulse that was guiding them. Whereas now there's so much in, in the materialistic culture that we live in, it's just all about the bottom line. So Big Pharma just does not care about us. And they'll do their studies. They'll say the vaccines are safe, uh, which the vast majority of people aren't going to have but they know, they're bean counters. They have these people that do the statistical set. They know a certain number of people, but this is utilitarian ethics. They're, they're going to be sacrificed for the greater good. This is the type of world that we live in. And they're not going to give you informed consent about it, but they do know that. So, and they think, well, this is, this is for the, uh, the common good. Well, no, it's more for the bottom line because they're going to make billions and that's what's driving them more than anything else. So these are, this is the type of world that we live in. And I just don't think the Muslim world uh, was like... It had a lot of problems. It had a lot of wrongs. And, but overall, if you look at the civilization, it was a civilization of beauty. Their clothes were beautiful. Their architecture was beautiful. Their uh, relationships were beautiful their customs and practices, many of them were beautiful. I mean, they did have some things that were unfortunate that should have been jettisoned. But overall, when people, some of the most visited architectural sites in the world are Muslim. I find it fascinating that when the Israelis want to put a tourist brochure out, they have the Dome of the Rock. They don't put a synagogue. They put a mosque when the, the Hindus want to entice people to come to India, they don't put a Hindu temple. They put the Taj Mahal. When the Spanish want to tempt people to come to Spain, they don't put some cathedral in Madrid. They put the Alhambra Palace on their brochures. What is that? It's really something just amazing about our faith. And so... The Romans are a very interesting people, and I don't want to collectivize because they have amazing, like all peoples, they have their evil and they have their good, and they have a lot of good. And I'm, my own, I mean, my ancestors are mostly from Ireland and some from Scotland and Greece, so it's, you know, they're the people that I come from, um, but... I think it's very dangerous to collectify any group of people, but we should understand civilizations and, and what informs them. Christianity, I don't think, informs this civilization to a large degree anymore. I think it's much more informed by materialistic and hedonistic ethos than before that. 